Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.11, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 16, Maverick E-Model. Today we're going to take a little look at the Laser Maverick, very similar in most respects to the F-Model Infrared Maverick that we've already covered. Uh, it has the same 136 kilo penetrating blast fragmentation warhead, uh, and the same theoretical 13 nautical mile maximum range. Um, however, in this instance, the weapon does not have an optical or infrared sensor, like most Mavericks do. It simply has a laser um, spot tracker uh, in the nose of the missile. So it's entirely dependent upon an off-board sensor for laser designation and target tracking. It can, uh, of course, target static as well as moving targets, as long as your targeting pod or um, laser designator is able to maintain that track. And um, yeah, it can be employed both in lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch modes. Today we're going to use the AT Fleur targeting pod to provide that tracking and designation. However, you could also buddy lays, uh, use a JTAC, or really anything else that's capable of emitting a laser. You can carry four of these Mavericks on the wing stations singly, just like the F model. That's stations 8, 7, 3, and 2. I'm demonstrating here the maximum possible loadout of Maverick E. I'm also carrying a single AMRAM and the AT Fleur pod, with which we'll do the targeting. Okay, let's jump into the cockpit and get everything set up. Uh, weapons profile on the SMS page here is MAV for Maverick. This is, after all, the standard Maverick used by the US Navy and US Marine Corps. Um, I've got four of them here in the wing stations, as I described. Uh, 80 Fleur, AMRAM, and 578 rounds of gun. Let's enter air to ground master mode and turn on master arm. Uh, these four are showing at standby. If we had done a ground start, um, they would require 30 seconds of uh, power up before they'd be ready. These ones are already ready. Let's choose the weapon profile. Um, it will have a cross through it. Now, um, if you're doing lock-on after launch, there will actually be a cross through it the whole time because it will only uncross when the weapon actually has a laser track. And of course, in that case, it won't have a laser track at launch. Um, but if you're doing lock-on before launch, this cross will disappear when the, when the uh, Maverick sees the laser and is ready to fire. Um, we can step through the different missiles using the step button, as always, and UFC will allow us to program the code that these missiles will look for, the default to the invalid 1111. Let's press UFC, select code, and I'm going to enter the standard 1688 for the purposes of this mission. That's how to program all of them at once. If I press UFC again, I can do one at a time. Uh, and this could be quite useful in the event that you want to actually salvo missiles off uh, and fire them at targets being illuminated by different um, lasers. So if you if you have buddies lasing multiple targets for you, you could pre-program the different codes that each of those other designators is using, and then ripple fire these off, which uh, could be quite a cool way of employing them. If I press Maverick again, by the way, I will get the Maverick format page. In this case, um, we've got the setting of the fuse down the left, so instantaneous, delay one, delay two. We're gonna use instantaneous. What station we're going to fire, station 8 in this case, whether the missile is caged or uncaged, uh, confirmation of the code. The cross is confirmation of where the caged seeker head is currently looked, looking. Sorry, um, If I uncage and it picks up the laser, that cross will turn into a box, and that means that it sees, sees the laser. Uh, confirmation of the codes programmed for each station, 2, 3, 7, and 8. They're all programmed to 1688. And again, you've got the step and UFC controls here. On the right-hand side, I'm going to bring up the AT Fleur. It's currently in standby. So let's go down to the sensors panel and put the FLIR into on. I also need to turn on the laser target designator slash rangefinder. That is now armed. And if we look at the AT Fleur, we can confirm laser arm. Let's go down here and set waypoint one as our target. Pod is now looking. I'm going to bring the field of view down. I'm going to press sensor select switch to the right to make this our sensor of interest. And I'm going to move my target over one of these vehicles. Okay, I've got a vehicle there. I'm depressing target designator, and I've now got a range to the target. 
Also confirm laser target designator is uh, going to emit a code of 1688, which is matching. If it was not matching, it would flash. And I could press UFC, and I would change the LTDC here. But uh, I'm going to leave it as 1688, because that is correct for our purposes. So uh, first, I'm going to demonstrate the lock-on before launch. So in order to do that, I need to box trig. And that, that now means that the uh, gun trigger is now live and will fire the laser. That's me firing. And now released. And it goes back to laser armed. So that's what we're going to do for this first launch. Also, up on the HUD, you can see the range indication for the missile. Maverick with a cross, uh, which for lock-on after launch would be fine, but in our case we want that cross to disappear before we launch. And then we have range to the target. Uh, as you can see, we're within range. Let's come out of active pause. Let's uh, press uh, sensor select switch to the left, and that immediately uncages the Maverick, and it's looking in the area of the target. Let's depress the gun trigger. Laser is firing. We've got the box. Maverick is no longer going to cross through it, and it says Mav locked in the HUD. Pickle. And rifle. Oh, and actually I just realised, for some reason, the uh, targeting pod went off target. But that's okay. I've moved it back on target. The missile should continue to track, uh, and we'll hit that target. Let's switch to F6. See what the missile is doing. Passing through the cloud cover. Let's accelerate time. Make sure that we've got a good track there. Looking good. Boom. Successful impact. Excellent. Okay, and the laser will automatically stop firing at the timeout. Uh, I've, I already released the trigger. Basically, as soon as you fire the missile, uh, the laser will go into its automatic mode where it fires for a set period of time. And it's off now. So, and trig becomes unboxed. One thing to note is that after firing that uh, missile and allowing it to time out, the laser target designator switch automatically flips back to safe. I'm now going to flip it back to armed again, so we're ready for our next attack. And for the next attack, we're going to ensure that trig is not boxed. Uh, we're not going to uh, lock on before launching that missile. Okay, uh, I'm going to let us get um, a bit further out. We'll go out to 10 nautical miles, and then I'll come back around. Uh, and we'll do a re-attack, this time with lock on after launch. Uh, the only problem with lock on after launch is that you, you don't know if the... Um, if the laser is within the field of view of the Maverick necessarily. Although in saying that, you can see the Seeker head automatically slew to the location where it knows the target is. So you'll see this cross drop down. Um, so basically, if you're within... I think this line here is the maximum. As long as you're within this, um, you're going to have uh, a good lock. Uh, also, as with the F model, you've got this triangle in the HUD uh, so that you know uh, what, where the, the missile is currently pointing going to disable the autopilot and let's uh, bring the aircraft around. There we go. Eyes on the target area. Rolling out here. Perfect. Okay, so I'm now going to slew over another target. Let's actually switch this to infrared. Oh, actually, I need to get below the cloud, even. Choose another target. That should do. So, that's depressed. I'm going to go sensor select switch left. I'm going to press uncage. Maverick is now looking at the target. I'm going to pickle. There we go. Missile is off the rail, and the laser is automatically firing. Uh, I just realised there is, in fact, no target at that location, but uh, we'll overlook that little <laughs> that little fact there. Uh, maybe I can even move the laser. No, I don't know where these targets are. Let's take that. Oh, that's because they moved. Right, okay. That is, in fact, not my fault. <laughs> but I've repositioned the laser. Let's see if that actually works. That would be nice if it did actually hit. 
It did. Haha. <laughs> so there you go. You can even actually slew the targeting pod around quite a bit and the missile will still follow the laser. So that's good to know. So that was the example of lock-on after launch. That actually worked really nicely. Uh, note that you have to hold the pickle down a bit longer for the lock-on after launch, uh, but otherwise it works in exactly the same way. So, uh, that was the AGM-65E, or Laser Maverick tutorial. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.